Okay, so over the last three weeks, we've been talking about the concept and practice of Sabbath. We've talked about how Sabbath gets our lives in rhythm with God. We've talked about how the Sabbath is a reminder that we are not ultimately defined by what we do. And we talked about how Sabbath is a reminder of the gospel message, that we do not work in order to earn our rest, but we rest because of the work that Christ has already done for us. Wow, we've learned so much. And so in today's video, I wanted to get really practical and just walk through what a typical Sabbath day looks like for Sweet Bear and I. So right now, Sweet Bear and I Sabbath on Saturdays. There have been other times in our marriage where we've practiced the Sabbath on other days, but just with our current schedule with me working at a church and so having to work quite a bit on Sundays, Saturday just works best for us right now. I know there's a lot of debate out there over what is the correct day to practice the Sabbath on. We're not really gonna get into that right now. I have another video that addresses it. Now, before we get into some of the specific activities of the day, one thing that has been sort of general and kind of an overall rule that I have loved as a part of my Sabbaths is that I don't look at my phone on the Sabbath. What? Yes, I turn off my phone pretty much for the entire 24 hours. I will check it maybe once or twice just in case of emergency, but pretty much everyone in my life knows that they can't really reach me on Saturdays. On Saturday mornings, on Sabbath mornings for Sweet Bear and I, we usually start the day by reading Psalm 92, which is called a Psalm for the Sabbath. And so we usually read that out loud. We've been working on memorizing the entire thing together. Then we'll usually pray and then the morning and honestly, the rest of the day is pretty open. Usually I make a big breakfast. We take buckets on a long walk. I do a lot of reading on the Sabbath, specifically fiction. I like to read a lot of fiction because I read a lot of nonfiction for my job. And then in the afternoon or evening, we might watch a good movie. We might go see some friends if we feel like it. We definitely eat a lot of good food. Honestly, our Sabbaths are not super replicable from one Saturday to the next. And we're not super strict and militaristic about what we do or what we don't do necessarily. And that's really because for Sweet Bear and I, the Sabbath is a relatively new practice. It's something we've really only been doing for the last year to year and a half. So we're still learning what it looks like for us. But I do recognize that the question of what types of things should I do on the Sabbath and what types of things shouldn't I do is a difficult question. And so one teaching from Jesus that I pretty consistently look to as a guide in figuring out which activities to lean into and lean out of on the Sabbath is found in Mark chapter three. We find Jesus in conversation with the religious leaders and they're having this exact debate. What is lawful or what is allowed on the Sabbath versus what kind of activity is forbidden on the Sabbath? And Jesus asked them this incredibly insightful question. He says, which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? In his book, Subversive Sabbath, A.J. Swoboda sort of translates this question from Jesus as, is this activity life giving or life taking? And Sweet Bear and I have sort of borrowed that mantra or that question. Anytime we approach a certain activity on the Sabbath, we ask ourselves, would engaging in this activity give us more life today? or would it drain us? Another really helpful barometer we sometimes use is John Mark Comer's questions for the Sabbath. When you come to a Sabbath activity, you ask yourself, is this rest and is this worship? So I know this video wasn't a typical teaching or sermon necessarily, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what Sabbath practically in real life looks like for us. And hopefully that gives you at least a little bit of a framework to start with for your own Sabbath. And the last thing I'll say, it has taken Sweet Bear and I many, many months to get into this rhythm and to discover what is life giving or what is rest or what is worship for us on the Sabbath. And so please, be patient with it. And again, my hope and encouragement to you through this whole series has been simply to try Sabbath this week. Try it, take note and stock of how it went, then try it again. Then try it again and try it again. Keep coming back to this practice and I believe you will discover just how life-giving and transformative it can be.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I wanted to let you know that this video is brought to you by my good friends at Inspiration Ranch. The ranch is a nonprofit out of Houston, Texas that provides equine therapeutic riding to children and adults with physical, emotional, and social special needs. I am running a thousand miles this year to raise money for the ranch. My goal is to raise $3,000, which would sponsor one student and their lessons for an entire year. And so I would be so grateful if you would take a minute and visit the link in the description down below and please consider giving to this cause, helping me, helping the ranch, help some of the most wonderful and vulnerable families in the Houston area. That is all I have for you today. Thank you again for watching. I love you all. Keep being awesome.